Hey everybody. So this is going to be a quick demo on how to do a shadow study in Rhino, uh, where the general goal is going to be to uh, get shadows at four different times of the year. So specifically what we're interested in, uh, in this case, is going to be using uh, the summer solstice and the uh, winter solstice and the equinoxes in March and September. So just Googling solstice, uh, you can see the dates for, uh, they do seem to change per year, but at least in 2020, uh, we have uh, the equinox on March 20th, uh, the summer solstice on June 20th, uh, the fall equinox on the 22nd of September, and the solstice uh, in the winter on December 21st. Um, so again, you probably, any of these days, I mean, they're all within one or two days of each other, so you'd probably be close enough. But just so you know, they do change, um, and just Googling it will give you a good distinction. So if you're watching this in the future, it may not be the same exact days. So you just want to look it up. Um, and then within each of those days, uh, it would be ideal to show a couple different times of the day. So I generally recommend doing uh, 9 a.m., 12 noon, and 3 p.m. Uh, that gives you a nice range from sort of morning light to sort of mid-afternoon light to late afternoon light. Uh, if you go much further in the extremes, you can start to get to the point where sometimes of the year the sun will actually be not up yet, or at really extreme angles that aren't super helpful. So I'm using just the same model that we made for Comscales and Studio. It has all the buildings in it. Uh, the things that you want to make sure you have are buildings at relatively appropriate heights, or at least as close as you know is reasonable. Uh, the elevation information isn't super necessary for this. Um, it's really just the sort of building forms and massings themselves. You will need a ground surface. It could be a flat ground surface, but in this case, I am using a ground surface based on the topography that even has curbs and stuff like that. Um, that's probably going to be better because it's a surface that will take the shadows more realistically than just a perfectly flat plane, but either would technically work for this. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to turn everything off other than the 3D geometry. Um, now, currently, these buildings are work sessioned in, and uh, I st stole these from one of the sections, I think, fairly for early on, so some of the organization isn't correct, so I can't actually turn off the elevations. Uh, but that's okay. Um, I am going to turn off roads because I don't need that line work, and I think I'll turn off my 2D site because I don't need that either. Um, all I want is just geometry. Uh, for this, I find it easiest to do a top view. Um, you could do an isometric view as well, but uh, but I find the plan view to be the easiest way to um, sort of digest the information directly. Uh, the isometric view can show you a different view. Of course, you know you get to see some three-dimensionality to it, but seeing the shadows on the ground to me is the most useful. But either works. So I'm just going to pick a sort of view where I can center our site pretty close to the center um, and try to get as many buildings as I can. I do want to save this view, so I currently have named views open. Um, and I'm just going to name this. I actually already done this one, so I'm just going to name it again and replace that. So if I move around, I can always double click and come back here. Named views is always a good idea, especially when you're making a series of images. And in this case, we're trying to make potentially 12 images, uh, three images per day and four days a year. Um, so we really want to make sure they all match up perfectly. Next, uh, type in the command sun, and it'll bring up this panel. You want to make sure your sun is turned on. You want to make sure manual control is turned off. Uh, and then down here, the first thing you want to do is set the city. So Frankfurt, Kentucky is the closest city to Cincinnati, and will give us accurate enough data. Um, there's so little variation between us and Frankfurt that doesn't really make a difference. Um, next, we want to go in and set the day, uh, the year, and uh, the time. So. Currently 2020, I'm going to go for the summer solstice, which is, uh, I believe, as we looked up, 620 in 2020. Yep. Um, and then I'm going to do three times a day. So it's currently set for 3 p.m. Um, we'll start with 9. Uh, and we want to make sure it's in a.m. You see here, this little line went into the blue section. That means the sun is actually below the horizon, so it wouldn't be giving any shadows. And I'm just going to use the standard rendered mode. I've already made some adjustments to this, so I'm just going to display options and show you what those are. So the adjustments I made, and I just hit restore defaults, are essentially under the visibility tab, turning everything off, uh, because all I really want out of this are the shadows. I don't want any of the extra lines, curves, nothing. I just want shadows. So just make sure everything here is unchecked. And you want to make sure it's set to scene lighting. 
Uh, next, I'm gonna go to shadows and I'm gonna turn the video memory all the way up and I'm gonna turn our shadow quality all the way up. Um, and then personal preference, but I'm gonna lower the edge softness all the way. So we get nice crisp shadows, leave edge blurring off and self shattering artifacts. Uh, I'm gonna do what I normally do, which is lower it all the way and then bump it up until it looks clean. Um, this allows you to get shadows that are well connected to your geometry that you're looking at. Um, because if you have it set uh, to too clean, shadows start detaching from the objects and that's not very useful. Uh, we don't have any transparent objects, so that won't make a difference. And the camera bubble uh, doesn't seem to help me in any way in this case. I have found times where adjusting that can help your shadows, so keep that one in mind. But in this case, we're not gonna need it. So once I've done that, I now have shadows basically on a white background. We can see a little bit of this sort of shadowing of the three-dimensional topography surface, but that's all we really want to need. Once I'm here, I'm just gonna do view capture to file and I'm gonna export these shadows. So I'm gonna make sure they're a nice high resolution so they look good. And I want the output resolution to be down here to be just at least over 3000. So I just put a scale multiplier of two so I can get a higher resolution output um, and that'll work fine. 4,000 something by 2,000, that's plenty of pixels. Hit OK. And I've already done this, uh, but I'm gonna do it again. So uh, you would want to make sure you're naming this as you go. So you wanna make sure you name it with the date and the time. So I'm just doing shadows 620, uh, 9 a.m. I already did them at 720. Um, I got the month wrong, so I'm redoing this, but that's okay. And hit OK. And because we're just using the default rendering settings, it shouldn't take too long to export. So that one took about five seconds. Um, so we can just repeat this process. Well, we need to change the time. So I'll make this 12 noon and just do the same thing over and over again. So you want to do this for all uh, 12 times and days of the year. So again, uh, the solstices, the equinoxes, three times a day. So we'll set that to shadows underscore 620 at 12. And I'm just gonna do one day for now. So then I'll do 3 p.m. Um, now I could do, let's see what four looks like. You can see uh, it'll be even more useful the more times you do. You can see as you get to the later evening hours, or not even evening, but five o'clock, the sun does start to come just a little bit from the north, um, but it's sort of an odd condition. I'm just gonna stick with three. Uh, and if you capture the file one last time. And 620. Now, I would want to do that for all the days, uh, but I'm going to stop for now just for the sake of this demo because it is a lot of repeating of the same task. Um, the next thing I want to get out is just some basic line work to help give a little bit more life to this drawing. And I'm just going to actually go to the pen mode and I've made some adjustments to my pen mode. So under display options, um, I just changed the background to solid white color because by default it has the weird paper texture, which I think is unnecessary. And that's all I'm gonna make, uh, all the adjustments I'm gonna to make to that style. And I am actually now gonna turn off my 3D geometry and turn back on my line work. So turn off the buildings and off the site. Uh, and figure out which lines you need. So the sidewalks I don't think look particularly nice, so I'm gonna turn them off. So I just have the topography, the road lines, and the site line. And that's it, that's, that's gonna be plenty. I might get rid of this text. I don't need that for this diagram. And I'm actually just gonna do view capture to file again. I could do a make 2D and make this into vector line work that I could bring into Illustrator then into Photoshop, but that seems like a lot of work when I just want this to be sort of subtle line work to um, add a little bit more information to my diagram. So I'm just gonna export it the same way I did everything else. It'll be the same resolution and should match up perfectly. So just hit okay. And I'm just gonna call it shadow lines. I already have one, I'm just replacing it. Okay. so. Next, we would take this into Photoshop. So I've already done this, um, as I've alluded to. Um, actually done this twice already. Um, but basically, the process is pretty simple. So 
I'm going to do this fresh. I need to get to where my files are. So I'm just going to drag in one by one these guys here. And I'm just going to drag the others on top of it. So all the ones for the same day just go straight on top. And I'm going to do the same thing with the line work and putting it on the very top. Now all the layers, I'm going to go down and double click on the bottom layer. Um, you can see here they come in with their names except for the bottom layer. And uh, I want them to be in order just so I can keep it uh, order in my head. So I'm going to put this one up because I know that one's 3 p.m. because this is uh, 9, 12, and 3 p.m. And just select all the layers and set them all to be multiply. Because basically, that'll just allow them to all sort of be seen at the same time. And now we can pretty easily see all the shadows. Now, the other trick that I um, often will do is distinguishing between the shadows. So if you want to be able to understand which are the shadows in the morning, which are the shadows in the evening, um, an easy way to do anything is just adding some color. So I'm actually going to go to my other file real quick just to grab one of these. Oops, that's not, nope, I already cut that off. Never mind. Uh, you can use the Adobe Color Picker uh, to pick a color scheme. So I'm just going to copy this guy from Illustrator and just bring it in because I already had it open. Any color scheme will work fine. doesn't really matter. Um, if you have one that you're already using for your composition, then that'll work perfectly. So I'm going to create a new layer, just a blank layer. And I'm going to select one of my colors. So I'm going to do a green. And then I'm going to go to the Paint Bucket tool and just fill that entire layer with that color, like so. And I'm going to do the same thing three times. So one for each time of day. Uh, using a different color for each. So we'll go back to eyedropper, get a nice gold. And you can't see these because they're below, but I painted the screen that color. And eyedropper again, get a red. You can see it on the side though, what's happening. So with these, I'm now going to apply them only to the layer below, below them. And I'm going to do that by hovering over the line between the layers, holding Alt and clicking. So you get that little thing that appears. Same thing for all three of these. And then selecting these layers, which I just held Control to do so. I'm going to change their layer type to either overlay or soft light. Go with overlay. It's pretty extreme looking, though. And basically, that has allowed us to color those shadows so that they're taking on the colors um, that we've sort of laid out for them. This might be a little bit graphically extreme looking, so you can make some adjustments to this or turn down your colors if you want. The other thing you can do is you can try other types of layers. So it looks like screen actually looks a little bit more reasonable, not quite as extreme looking. So maybe that's the way you'd want to go. Um, and that's about it, actually. So the shadows are on top. Or not the shadows, the line work are, is on top. Um, and this would be one day of the year. So you do the same process for a couple other days, um, or not all, a couple other days, but uh, the solstices and the equinoxes, and that'll be it. Okay, so that's it for this demo. Thanks.